respond to Mr. Katura. Uh, Mr. Katura, as a sports person and as one who deals with sports people, there have been many stories of our sports leaders. Recently, we had uh, the respected footballer Andreas Iniesta coming out and telling us he battled with depression for quite a long period of time, and some of his teammates were so surprised because he seemed to be very normal on pitch and his performance was as expected. And it is more or less an issue of some people who are depressed not coming out. So as one who deals with sports persons and also one who deals with people having careers, it's well known that workload has repeatedly been tied to stress and burnout. I would like to know how employers or managers or CEOs can deal with works place, stress, and burnout? Um, thank you very much. I think, Hilary, that's a very interesting question because um, much as we have a discussion about mental health being um, accredited to drug abuse and other things, we also have an emergence of young people that are actually getting anxiety, depression, and seclusion because of the kind of work they are dealing with. And I think that becomes um, a pertinent issue to discuss. But um, first and foremost, I will discuss, I think, two major things that we need to understand. And this will be no offense to government representatives in the House. I think first and foremost that we have very bad leadership in most of the corporate companies and also government institutions in this country. I think um, in terms of leadership, we are still lacking because um, very many young people today are working in an environment where numbers are prioritized over their well-being that we have young people who have targets to meet every financial year, every quarter, and failure to hit these targets means that they are not competent, means they are not worthy, and therefore they become subjects to retrenchment. That already becomes one of the biggest problems. So the issue of leadership has become a key issue. Secondly, we see that um, we have very many leaders, even in these top organizations, even, for example, in the sports institutions, where the leaders are willing to sacrifice the workforce in order to achieve numbers or targets, right? So you have, um, for example, the Fortune 500 companies, you have all these big um, companies that, for example, when they're having a financial crisis, the first option is to retrench the young people or whichever person is working. So there's really no discussion about how do we rehabilitate the workforce to help us deliver the numbers. So that is already a problem. So the leadership in terms of um, the, the structures has become a problem. And now this is how it translates into when you have bad leadership, you fail to understand that there's need for you to create a workspace for people to grow themselves and create a platform where things like mental health can be discussed. Because what happens is that when someone is not very good in terms of leadership, one, very many people are not assigned the jobs they are supposed to do, very many people are not being given, um, very many people are not being recognized for the great work they do in some of these institutions, which has become very key. We see that very many people are having jobs that do not have a work-life balance. Right, that very many of these jobs are demanding and they require these young people to be in office, for example, from eight to 10. I have friends who are doing uh, in audit firms who work as late as 10. So the elimination of a work-life balance in most of these organizations has made very many people actually frustrated in the work they do. And further to note, maybe Hillary, very many people have put parents at the center or have castigated these people. But again, with this kind of structure of workforce, you see that parents can also become victims of anxiety, depression by virtue of the work they do, right? So if you have targets to meet and you have goals to attain in the event that you don't attain them, then we think that there's a problem. So maybe quickly, Hillary, maybe to ask some, to some of the questions for people to actually know that they're actually um, depressed or they're anxious. Many people may, may not know and they're actually here, right? So someone needs to, uh, um, to answer, um, how do I actually get to know that in a workforce that I'm actually depressed? So there are some of the signs, for example, we see that um, we have um, fatigue in the workplace, right? We see lower productivity for some of us as we work, right? We seclude ourselves from other people that we work with. You're in a workforce, but you tentative, you always get annoyed or frustrated. Right? So these are some of the things that usually show that people are actually having issues in the workplace. But very many people don't want to discuss about this, like my previous panelists have said. And so those are some of the signs in the modern workplace that have gone on to show that people are actually victims of mental health. Right? And um, now the question is, for example, what solutions do we have and how can we measure them, which is the question Hillary has posed. Right? So some of the solutions is that, um, that we, I think we need to do, one, we need to 
recognize employers. Human beings in and of themselves pride on being recognized for great performance. In any kind of structure or business you operate, you ought to recognize top performers, right? Secondly, I think there's need for improvement in leadership, both in government and the private organizations, where we have leaders that are selfless and seek to have their employers become the best they can be. It's not a discussion about numbers, about breaking even financially every year. It is about having a workforce that has a vision of a leader and can be able to implement that vision in the years to come. But also further, we need to have, um, like my colleagues Mumbai talked about, um, a management program oh, uh, and anxiety. Yeah. An anxiety management program where this workforce can be able to, to, to discuss, for example, right? And then also, and most importantly, the values of an organization ought to reflect in their daily behaviors as they deal with the workforce in, in an organization. We, we go to very many organizations, they have things like integrity, transparency, and you have um, a huge chunk of fraud happening every financial year. So very many people in the organization don't have values that actually reflected in how they manage the workforce. For example, if your value is teamwork, the team members in the organization ought to feel that they are part of a team, that they are part of a family, and that family can be able to be a platform on which they can discuss on very many of the issues they actually have. So how would you get to know that you're actually having progress as an organization? You see increase in productivity, you see platforms where young people can discuss in an organization, you see a support system where one of the members is down and these other members can actually be able to support them, you see that um, they have a life outside the, outside the work environment. Someone has children they can raise, they can go on retreats, they can go on vacation. And therefore, it means that parents can be able to raise their children better if the work environment or the framework in which they are working can favor them to actually live a life outside the work environment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor.